So I'm using the same example that I used in the previous video, um, but I just wanted to go into it a little deeper. So in that video, I had uh, said, perhaps we were gonna look at the top 10%. So how would we do that? And so we know that um, to this marker is 2%, to this marker is 16. So the number is going to be somewhere between 110 and 120. And I, I know that's a big gap, but um, it's some place to start. So we want to remember that our rules are, if we're starting with a percent and we're going to a score, the first thing we do is draw it, which we just did in very messy form. Then what we want to do is look at the table and see if we can find in the table um, the z-score that's associated with either a 10% uh, in the C column. So this would be 10% here in the C column. And think for a minute, what would it be if it was in the B column? So what is here? If this is 10%, this one would be 40%. So if we look up 40% in the B column or 10% in the C column, we're gonna get the same Z-score. Then once we found that z-score, we're going to plug it into this equation here. It's x equals mu plus our z-score times our standard deviation. So really the piece that we need, we have all the pieces that we need, is we just need to find our z-score. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's pull up our table and see if we can find a z-score associated with the top 10%. So I'm using the table that I like, and I'm gonna look in the C column for 10%, and 10% as a proportion is 0 0.10. So if I scroll through this table, looking in the column for the C, the C column, I'm gonna come over here to the very end, and I see a one, 0 0.003. That seems like the closest I'm going to get to 10%, uh, and that z-score is 1.28. So if you're trying to orient to what I'm looking at, um, you want to scroll for the z-score of 1.28 because if I scroll over to the C column, I see it's 0 0.102, sorry, 1, 0.1003. Now let's say I had looked for the B column of 40% then that would be a proportion of 0 0.40, and I find that 0.3997 is as close as I'm gonna to get to 0 0.40, and that's a z-score of 1.28. So I am gonna use the 1.28 in my calculations. So let's go back and get to where we need to plug it in. Okay. So now we're here, and I'll put it in um, green, I guess. So we know that our mu is 100, because I like nice numbers, and my z-score is a positive 1.28. You always want to take stock of whether it's positive or negative. Any of the numbers that are down to the left of the mean are going to be negative numbers, and any number z-score numbers that are to the right are going to be positive numbers, and you have to do that. The table isn't going to do that for you, so you want to make sure you remember that. So I have um, 1.28 times 10, and I love it when I do this kind of math because even I can do this in my head. So 1.28 times 10 is 12.8, so that means this is going to be 100 plus 12.8. Eight, sorry, I think I said 12.28, but I meant to say 12.8. And that number is 112.8. And so the answer to the question of what score is associated with the top 10% is 112.8. My last tip is to always go back and see if that fits in your picture. Now remember, we said that it was somewhere between 110 and 120. So 112.8 actually fits quite nicely, and that's going to be the answer to this question. So what you see we have done is we're kind of following all the same steps as we did before, um, and we still have to really visualize it before anything. If you can't visualize it in the graph, you don't really know what to do with the math. Um, 
And so once we visualize it in this table or in this distribution, then it's very clear what we should be looking up in the table. So spend some time drawing it. If it says top, you start at the top and you go down the number of percentage points that I say. If it says the bottom 10%, then you start at the bottom and go up the number of percentage points that are required. Okay, hopefully that feels solid.